What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news. And both this week and next, we're going to get new updates to the game. Bungie have said they plan to buff Deep Sight Resonant weapon drop rates in Wellspring, which is good news. But they'll also buff drop rates for Ascendant Alloy and have a bunch of fixes lined up. On top of these though, today we're going to talk broken weapons, and some weapons have received accidental buffs. Plus there are some new loot farms to cover, bugged shaders which look rather wild, new cutscenes, and a lot more to discuss in the video. So I hope you guys enjoy this one, and if you do, definitely get subscribed to the channel to see more Destiny content. And now let's get into it. Up first today we get some conversation from Bungie about various feedback items and some very important updates that they'll be doing in the next week. So initially DMG said good conversations being had today. The Witch Queen just launched but the team has lots of eyes on feedback and concerning Gambit they're watching heavy ammo and weapon usage rates as well as invasion frequency and primeval phase health and healing. Essentially saying they're aware of various bits of that feedback. Also on PC quite a few players have been having some performance issues and Tom Warren said if you're having stuttering, motion blur like slowness and weird frame drops, there is an older Nvidia driver worth reverting back to. There's also a conversation about potential memory leaks, and DMG has said that the team is digging on these issues and they'll provide updates when possible. Additionally though, following the weekly reset yesterday, Master Raoul's Ascendant Alloy didn't reset, of course there's a weekly limit on how much we can purchase. That limit hasn't been lifted, so DMG said we've got to report over to the team, and once we have more info we'll sound off via Bungie Hell. So hopefully one they'll get sorted in the next few days. But Bungie Help also said due to an issue causing some exotics to deal more damage than intended, we've disabled the enhanced 1-2 punch trait, and weapons utilizing the enhanced trait will now function as the regular 1-2 punch trait until it's re-enabled on March 10th. Although some of the stuff you can do with standard 1-2 punch right now is still very very strong. So we could expect more changes there. And finally Bungie Help said we're investigating a problem causing the Osteostriga Catalyst shape cost to be required on all subsequent reshapings of the weapon. And players attempting to reshape Osteostriga can bypass this cost by reapplying the catalyst during the reshape process. And so bear that one in mind as well. But in terms of important gameplay updates, Joe Blackburn from Bungie tweeted that the team's been playing a lot of Witch Queen and they want to give some updates with where they're at. So firstly, he says they aren't happy with how unpredictable it can be to complete the report relic data quest. And he adds that they're still monitoring the time commitment for unlocking and upgrading crafted weapons, but the drop rates and unlock requirements for the Wellspring Throne World weapons are currently going to gate off too many players from being able to earn their exotic glaives. And so, in a patch targeting next week, they will be increasing the drop chances for weapons in Wellspring, and they'll be adding bad luck protection for both getting a standard drop and a deep sight resonant version of a weapon. And he adds that if you want to be one of the first for a crafted version of the weapons, we can continue to grind this week, but we should be aware that next week this step should be a lot easier to make reliable progress on. And so I think that's a really positive change, but of course we're going to have to wait until next week. However, he goes on to say, Ascendant Alloy drop rates aren't where we want them to be, and this Thursday we're getting some fixes for Ascendant Alloys to be more predictable in high level activities. So with the patch targeting this Thursday, you'll have greater chances to receive an Ascendant Alloy, not just by playing difficulty tiers of the activity, but also based on your Platinum, Gold and Silver completion level. This will mean higher chances at earning Ascendant Alloys for Gold and Platinum completions, but we'll continue to monitor and adjust drop rates as the season progresses. And so I think that's another really positive change, as if your RNG isn't being fantastic, you can go quite a long time without actually seeing any Ascendant Alloys. I've done various weekly missions and things like that, and I've never actually had one drop in the game myself. So it's a bit unreliable, and it's positive that we're going to be getting those changes. And then on the subject of the upcoming raid, Joe Blackburn also said, Finally, we're monitoring several gameplay sandbox elements as we head towards the world's first race. Right now we're looking at an interaction that centers around Syntheseps and a few interactions that center around Suppressive Glaive. Expect more information around our plan here in the TWAP with both short-term solutions to protect the world first race and longer term adjustments. And so there are potentially some sandbox elements that could be locked out or changed before the launch of the raid at the weekend. But otherwise he says we're buckling down to look at how things like Void 3.0 and weapon crafting are affecting the rest of the game so that we can start dialing things in to create a solid year 5 of D2. And so give us any of your thoughts about those changes below, and I'll keep you guys posted when we get any more info. 
A few other things to round up here, and initially, some weapons doing more damage than intended. And one of them is the Ikelos SMG. It's very, very strong at the moment, and players have figured out that it received the 40% damage buff meant only for exotic primaries. And so it's a really, really strong weapon at the moment. I believe that is also impacting the Imperial Needle. But another weapon that seems to be bugged at the moment is Wardcliff Coil. It is once again doing some fairly ridiculous damage, and it looks like the damage reduction that was applied to the weapon against bosses a couple of years back now as it was very problematic. Yeah, it looks like that's no longer working correctly, and so Wardcliff is also putting out some very surprising damage. Something else that players have been doing in the past couple of days is farming the Funnel Web. This is a new Vice SMG, and it is remarkably similar to Recluse, and some of the roles like Subsistence Frenzy also get it fairly similar to that weapon. And so a lot of players want it at the moment, but it's in the world pool. And as we know, getting a good roll on world pool weapons can be pretty difficult because they're not very targetable. And so one of the strategies that players are using is to use a separate platform that doesn't own Witch Queen. So for instance, if you're a PC player, you've bought Witch Queen on Steam, but you don't own it on Xbox or Google Stadia. You can go ahead, boot it up on the platform that doesn't have Witch Queen, and then when you farm Throne World chests, which are still accessible, it won't actually drop Witch Queen loot, which opens up that world pool as the primary drops. And of course, that's giving players a much better chance of picking up Funnel Web, especially one with decent perks. So if that's an option for you, that's all good. And otherwise, in general, definitely look out for nice rolls on the Funnel Web SMG. Something I wanted to mention regarding Throne World, and a lot of us have had a quest called Memory Elemic inside of our inventory. You may have also noticed an item called Qualicor. And this item is earned from a chest after killing Hive Executioners on Throne World, and these enemies spawn with a white shield, and we need to kill a bunch of them in different locations for the quest. And once that quest completes, we'll get a refined Qualicor, and this can be used to open a special chest in the center room at the Fluorescent Canal after clearing a set of Executioners. And the chest is actually up near the ceiling on a platform, but it won't spawn until that Executioner event has been completed. And of course, you have to have the refined Qualicor to actually open the chest. But a heads up, when you're completing that Memory Elemic quest, you can get bonus progress by double dipping the chests actually spawned by the Hive Executioners. So at the one in Fluorescent Canal, we took the Executioners out, and then I actually headed to the Miasma Zone. Once I got there, I turned back and went towards the chest once again in Fluorescent Canal, and I was able to open this chest three times, which gave me a lot more progress on that memory quest. So if that's one you're still working on, bear in mind being able to double dip those chests. Very final shout before we touch on some of the season stuff, but don't know if you guys have seen this. It was shared to me by my friend Duditz. And if you wear the Knight's Chill Shader, if that's one you've got in your inventory, currently it puts this pretty wild pattern onto your armor. Not sure if it's a placeholder, but it's definitely bugged. And you end up with this pink and blue kind of patterned armor, which looks very, very loud and certainly pretty unique. So if you're interested in dressing up a bit funky until they fix that shader, definitely go ahead and see if you have the Knight's Chill Shader in your inventory. And now to talk some of the weekly content, of course, we got a new series of steps for the Operation Elbrus quest for Season of the Risen. And upon completing the new Cosmodrome PsyOps Battleground, Saladin showed us a new room in the Helm where Captive Hive are being interrogated by a Scion to gather intel. Really cool room, and generally a cool idea, but the main twist here is that Crow is also present when we get to Helm, and he wasn't happy to see what we're doing to these Hive. Essentially, he thinks it's cruelty. He also makes a few remarks regarding Zavala's leadership. So Crow is definitely coming out with quite a few of his own opinions now, but Saladin tells him a story about making decisions and taking risks. It's really just a story from Saladin's history, but it's really cool. It turns out to be one of the neatest animated cutscenes we've probably had in the game. So if you didn't see that or you missed out on it, here it is in full. Long ago, even before there was a last city, I was deep on patrol in the old forest when a local villager sought me out. They asked me to catch a thief. I told them the Iron Lords were no mercenaries, but I saw their pride as well as their poverty. When they offered me a loaf of black bread instead of coin, I agreed. Just before sunrise, I caught my thief, a young girl stealing what she could carry, food when she could find it, coin when she couldn't, weapons to protect what she had taken. There was no fear in her eyes. She said the bandits in the forest ordered her to steal in exchange for protection. The penalty for theft in those times was death. Instead, 
I pulled the crest from around my neck and pressed it into her hands. I told her the wolves would protect her. In a settlement rich with stolen supplies, I found the bandits and cut them down. 38 lives to spare one. And for a time, I believed that was mercy. Many winters passed before I found myself back in that part of the old forest. This time, no one sought me out. So I sought them instead. Wind blew through rotted wood and rusted metal where the village once stood. And behind it, graves. Then piled stones, then bare mounds of earth, and then... a pit. My blood was high. I tore through the forest, hunting for those responsible. Finally, in a settlement rich with stolen supplies, I found her. A lightless woman, with my crest around her neck. There was no fear in her eyes. She spoke plainly. When the villagers could no longer tithe, her wolves no longer protected them. She bled them dry, and when they had no more to give, she sent in her men, unleashed her wolves. Mercy to an enemy cannot come at the cost of mercy for their victims. The right path isn't always easy to find. But once you do, the only question is whether you're strong enough to walk it. Pretty cool stuff right there. Let us know what you think below. And separately, of course, a few new Throne World bits popped up, including new dialogue in the memory missions for the week. And don't forget, new moths are available to collect and place at Finch. And if you need the location for those, I'll link a video from Time Sausages down below. The only very final shout right here that I wanted to mention, but there is this kind of shooting range type space in the Enclave. And given that it doesn't really have much of a function at the moment, and considering the layout of it, players are now discussing the possibility of whether this is an upcoming puzzle. There are also some statues in the Enclave that appear to be set up like chess pieces, so perhaps all of these things will interact with each other at some point, and this could turn into a puzzle of sorts. Definitely seems possible, so I'd be curious to get any thoughts from you guys about what that could possibly be down in the comments section. But otherwise for today, that's what we have to speak about in the video. As always, I'll keep you posted when we get updates to the game, as we are going to get one this week. So definitely get subscribed if you're new around here, and you can turn on notifications if you don't want to miss out on any content as soon as it drops. If you've enjoyed the video today though, a rating down below really does help us out. But otherwise, as always, I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.